Hi there guys, I'm Chris Bowden and you're not. Today on The Geek Group, we're doing an equipment autopsy on the world's most annoying toy. All right, we're back and today I have this. I got it at a garage sale for 75 cents and it was all fun and good until Billy got a hold of it and after about five minutes, everybody in the house wanted to kill him. Because this, if, if you're a grandparent, you need to get one of these. If you're a parent, you need to kill whoever gives your kid one of these. But this is, it's a, it's probably the secret thing that like Mariah Carey has in her studio. But it's like, it's like home done auto tuning. It's really, it's, it's bad. It's, you got, there's a set of dip switches on it here. There's, there's five switches and they go to a little, there's a little breadboard inside, really simple. And you pull the trigger and you talk through here and it changes the voice around and you can move the switches and it does all kinds of cool stuff like that. So you got like the, the James Earl Jones sitting right here and uh, oh, that's, that's pretty much normal right there. So yeah. And you can do all kinds of weird stuff by moving the switches around and yeah, it's, it's, it's a vocoder. It's a really, really cheap, nasty vocoder. And it was 75 cents at a garage sale and I bought this specifically because I wanted to take it apart. So that's what we're gonna do. It comes with the Paco high quality Yum Cha Chinese battery, which is crap. So let's take it apart. Let's see what we got inside. Actually, I need that because I wanna fire it up after we take it apart. It's also got a little thing of LEDs around the outside that light up with it. So let's take this apart. This would be a really basic equipment autopsy because this thing, somebody probably spent a whole dollar making it. It's really, really basic. Just injection molded plastic. You can do a lot with just injection molded plastic. There's like six screws hold the whole thing together. A circuit board, speaker. Arr. These screws kind of suck. Yeah, do better. Oh yeah, that's way better. There we go. Got to get some of those $35 screws from uh, B&H. <laughs> We're looking at the uh, B&H website today because we are saving up to get a new field camera because the HM100Us suck in low light because they're only little tiny like quarter inch sensors. So we're on B&H website and we're looking at camera stuff and they have, I'll put a link to it right here. There's a, they have, it's like, oh, what was it? Like 30 bucks? It was like $34? 30, 30, yeah, it was 30 something dollars for a, a single torque screw, which for those of you who know anything about screws, it's a, a single torque screw should cost a penny, a fraction of a penny. And they're selling it for like 30 bucks. And the funny thing is, the shipping was over $5 <laughs> for a bolt, one little Torx bolt. So yeah, I, I, the pricing of things in the professional video world has so far surpassed what is just completely retarded that I don't even know how to feel about it anymore. I feel bad. I feel bad, but I just, it's it's beyond bad like I see the pricing on so like follow focus gear where it's like a couple little metal bars and a stupid lens hood and they want like four thousand dollars for this stuff uh, you guys are retarded it's nuts it doesn't even have a real switch in it it's just two springs that touch that's the switch right there look at that two springs that touch that's our high tech switch oh I gotta put the battery back in there We'll touch our springs of science together. All right. Audio check, one, two, three, audio check. So, yeah, it works. And we've got, this is the kind of thing, oh, no, it's got a bubble chip on it. I hate bubble chips. See, take a look here. See that? That's a regular chip. That's a little SMT chip. And this here, that black blob of gunge, well, there's a chip under there. But there's no way of knowing what it is or what it does or how it works or any of that. It's, it's the cheapest possible solution for a chip. It's a chip that doesn't actually have a case. They just put a black wad of gunge on top of it for 
epoxy encasement or potting or something. Now we'll take the switch covers off. And that's our board, which is three capacitors, one, two, three, and five switches. And that's it on the front. On the back, there's a chip. And I think that's a diode and a little transistor and just, you know, some basic. It's really, really simple. I mean, this is just stupid simple. Over here, look at the build quality we've got. You can see, here, I'll take this off because it's not every day you get to see this bad of a build quality. Oh, by the way, before I get 50 letters asking me what is that, the black thing on my arm is poly. It's a, a special type of paint that they were painting the bridge. Um, we did, you, you haven't seen the video yet, but it'll be out soon. We did a video on pendulums, and this involved hanging Billy and I from, and Kidwell at one point, from the bottom of a really big train bridge and they were painting the bridge that day and this stuff it's I finally got it off my hands but I got some of it in various other places and it's yeah I've got it on my climbing gear too so now you know now look in here we've got our speaker comes out and it's a really high class one watt speaker and then we've got the crap I if, if this had been done by a junior high student who was I don't know high on meth it would look better than that. All right, just, we've got hot glue and LEDs and they didn't even trim the leads. Like the leads on the LEDs are still really long and it's just soldered right on there. This is the cheapest manufacturing ever. So it's really, really bad. But that's it. That is our equipment autopsy on the annoying voice changer. Let's take, hey, I got an idea here, okay. Let's see what we can do. Yeah. I got an idea. All right. First, we'll get rid of the lights because those really, they don't do anything. We don't need the lights. So we'll, we'll cut the lights off. Yeah. Don't need that. And now let's take and cut this off. And that. Okay, and get rid of the gunge. Now we strip these back a bit. Actually, you know what I should use to strip these wires? The Not the dikes. Garber Ninja! Which is totally a thing now. Cause I got, dude, we got like 50 comments on that. You check out the comments on the latest video and Gerber Ninja is totally a thing, and there's going to be a t-shirt, and, and it might actually say, you know, not just Gerber Ninja, it might actually say Gerber Ninja, and Corey's a dick. Just like that, okay? I might come out with a separate t-shirt that mocks you, and it could have like a sheepdog on it. <laughs> Corey very rarely gets caught on camera. He works very hard to avoid getting caught on camera, but if you, if you look closely and check out stuff on my video blog, you can find pictures of Corey, and he looks like a big sheepdog. If you remember the sheepdog, was that the Warner Brothers cartoons with the sheepdog? I believe so. Yeah, so he looks like a sheepdog. From we got to find out what his name is. I think it was Sam. Sheepdog McGee. No, he had, he had a name. There, he had a name. Everybody in the Warner Brothers scene. Oh yeah. Now, let's flip a couple switches. I've invented my own justice concert right there. Okay, I just, I did that. I got a justi justice concert in my pocket. And by moving it, like if I move it off axis, it changes. Like watch, we'll start out right on axis. Okay, here, like that. 
Okay, now what's happening here is this is a feedback loop. Now remember, this is an amplifier. So we've got a microphone here, and we've got a speaker here. So if I talk into the microphone, you can hear things out the speaker like that. Now if I turn it off axis, I'm cool. Now what on axis means is like that, straight on the speaker. That's, that's on axis. Off axis is anywhere else, like off to the side or something like that. Now even if you're still behind the speaker, you're still on axis. And if you're doing things in a recording studio where like you're recording a guitar out of the cabinet, you'll get a different sound if you put the microphone on axis versus off or over here, stuff like that. But if I talk into this, you get a... I broke it! Damn! I don't know where that hooked either. I, is that it? Yeah, that's it. All right. So, ah! All right, I, I broke it. Now I gotta fix it so I can use the damn thing. Where's... <laughs> I need a test lead! Okay, I got test leads. There we go. Okay, I'm gonna fix it real quick. Cheap Chinese crap. Audio check, one, two. Okay, so we're back. All right. We're kind of back. We're, we're kind of back. It works. See? There. High tech, state of the art. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah! Hang on. I didn't think it would have been possible for the audio quality to go. Yeah, boy! Okay, I'll shut up now. But, all right, I've got it back, it works, it's cool. Oh yeah, I'm quite the man. All right, so what I've got is I've got a microphone here, and there's an amplifier in here at some point, probably that one chip, and we've got a speaker. So if I create a sound by tapping this, it takes that sound, when I put this up in front, it takes that sound, any input sound that's big enough to trigger the mic. You can see it's got a, a filter because it doesn't work it doesn't make any sound at all until I get really close, and once I get close, it starts making more and more sound. So yeah, it's got a, it's called a gate. Go there, you'll learn about gates. But once the sound gets loud enough to bypass the gate, it takes the sound in, goes through a thing, puts the sound out here, but louder, and it'll do that over and over and over again, because now it'll take the input sound, amplify it, send it out, pick it up again, amplify it again, send it out again, and it gets a cycle, and it gets a loop, and it's called feedback, positive feedback at that. So if I put this right in front of it so that it can actually feed back. And see, now we're, we're out beyond the threshold. So you can see how it changes as I get further away from it. It's... Now let's try changing. Let's put this down right there and we'll put this right over the top and we'll see how it changes as I flip the we'll see how it changes as I flip the switches. So we're doing a little experiment here. Oh yeah. It's got a groove to it. Totally adjust the sound there. probably turn it off it's getting well I know where the amplifier is now <laughs> the amplifier is most definitely that little chip right there because it's toasty so 
There you go. I'm going to leave that connected because when Kidwa comes back, actually, I might just solder that myself. Do a lesson on soldering. Yay. So I'm going to set that aside over there. We'll be playing with that some more in a future video. Watch it crappy Chinese battery last for the next 10 years. So there's your equipment autopsy on, I don't even know what it's called, Annoying Megaphone? We'll call it the Annoying Megaphone. I'm Chris Bowden with The Geek Group. You guys have fun. Please remember to rate, comment, subscribe, and become a member. Join The Geek Group at www.thegeekgroup.org. We're a million guys just like you that like to take stuff apart and tinker and do a little circuit bending there, which is kind of cool. You guys have fun. I'll see you next time. This video was made possible by a grant from the Future Girl Foundation. This video was made possible by thousands of private donations from members and viewers like you. Please visit thegeekgroup.org for more information on how you can donate and become a part of our dreams of Avalon.